Rich and successful, Che Ball princess and manager of a highly acclaimed Korean beauty and fashion business, Se Ri's days were brimming with vibrant energy, but little does she know that her life is about to change. Recently released from prison for financial crimes, one day, Se Ri's father calls the family together for a special dinner to announce the successor of his Che Ball company. However, the chairman shocks everyone by declaring Se Ri, who is somewhat the black sheep of the family as the new chairwoman, which she accepts although she requests a brief postponement of the official announcement to finish the final tests for a groundbreaking product she's developing. The next day, Se Ri goes on a paragliding expedition to put her innovative creation to the test, but the skies had something else in store for her. In a surprise tornado, Se Ri is caught off guard and whisked away, leaving her unconscious and at the mercy of the wild winds. Meanwhile, in the mysterious realm of North Korea, Captain Ri Jong Hyuk, the commander of the DMZ patrol team, successfully negotiates the transfer of three captured North Korean artifact smugglers. However, his decision to defy an order from Cho Chiol Gang, an officer from the state security department, stirs a hornet's nest of consequences. As Chiol Gang, consumed by a sinister agenda, discovers the hiding place of the smugglers' valuable artifacts and orchestrates a deadly accident, silencing the witness to the crime. And as the sun dawns on a new day, Seiri slowly wakes up to find herself hanging in a tree. Desperate for rescue, she cries out, hoping against hope that help would arrive, and to her shock, Captain Ri appears out of the bushes, his gun aimed in her direction. Amidst her pleas, Captain Ri tells her to get down from the tree, unintentionally causing her to fall into his arms. With wide-eyed bewilderment, Seiri listens to Captain Ri's revelation that the tornado has carried her into North Korea. Terrified, she accidentally runs straight into a hidden landmine. Luckily, a quick-thinking Kwong bomb, a member of Jiang Hyuk's patrol team, defuses the imminent bomb, giving Seiri a narrow window to escape. Quickly running through the minefield, her heart pounding in her chest, Seiri's freedom proved fleeting as Captain Ri catches up with her, bridging the gap between their two worlds. At the same time, in South Korea, Seiri's family wrestles with a dilemma, choosing to hide her sudden disappearance, fearing a disastrous impact on the company's stock price. Brutally opportunistic, Se Jun and Se Hong, Se Ri's ambitious brothers, seize the chance to claim the chairmanship for themselves. As the situation becomes complicated, Captain Ri holds a meeting with his loyal DMZ patrol officers, and, despite the dangers, they all decided to help protect Se Ri, housing her in the best place to keep her safe, Captain Ri's own home. Soon, Se Ri finds herself immersed in a world very alien from her own as she experiences the routines and customs of Captain Ri and his men, as well as the community of village women. As it turns out, Captain Ri is a good host, even venturing into the bustling black market to get some of Se Ri's more personal requests so that she can feel more at home. Meanwhile, across the country, Soong Joon, a South Korean criminal evades arrest in South Korea and seeks refuge in a hidden luxury North Korean villa which he got through connections in the underground world. During an unexpected home inspection, Seiri's hiding place at Captain Ri's home is found by the authorities, and in a race against time, Captain Ri speeds back from Pyongyang. With Seiri being held at gunpoint, he arrives just in the nick of time. In a daring move, Captain Ri crafts a bold background story for Seiri, casting her as a recently returned agent from Division 11, a highly classified division of the North Korean Armed Forces specializing in training and deploying elite spies to South Korea. To further trick the officers, Captain Ri introduces Se Ri as his fiancée hoping that this brazen lie helps them evade arrest. The village women, enthralled by the story and the gossip, welcome Se Ri into the community. However, Captain Ri's enemy, the evil Cho Chiol Gang, still remains suspicious and orders continued surveillance on Captain Ri's house. While this is happening, So Don, Captain Ri's real fiancée, returns to North Korea after finishing her studies in Russia. Will So Don ruin Se Ri's cover? After carefully planning an escape route back to South Korea, Captain Ri and Se Ri board a boat headed to the border. However, they are quickly stopped by maritime patrollers. With no other ideas, Captain Ri uses his only knowledge of South dramas to save them by kissing her. When the Coast Guards open the door, they start making out as he yells at them to come out from there. Their boat driver explains that they were just trying to go night fishing, but these youngsters are trying to make kids as well. He lets them go but tells them to turn their boat around immediately. Unfortunately, the ship that Seiri was supposed to get on could be seen in the nearby distance. Later, when alerted by one of his men, Captain Ri finds a farewell note left by Seiri. It turns out, Seiri has embarked on a seemingly impossible plan to paraglide down from a mountain to return to South Korea. With the men of Cheol Gang closing in, Captain Ri knows he has to act swiftly. In a heart-stopping escape, he and Seiri bravely paraglide down the treacherous mountain, narrowly evading their chasers. At the same time elsewhere, 
The rat soldier, a state security agent who is tasked with listening to them, receives new instructions under Chal Gang's command. And flashbacks reveal the kind-hearted nature of Captain Ri who had once extended a helping hand to the rat soldier. As fate would have it, So Don's taxi strands her in the middle of nowhere. But, by a stroke of luck, So Ng Jun happens to pass by and offer her a ride. So, while enjoying a walk, Say Ri and Captain Ri are taken by surprise when So Don arrives and is introduced as Captain Ri's fiancé. That night, the village women, unsure of who's the real fiancé, decide to share drinks with Say Ri, believing she was being double-timed. While Captain Ri does not waste any time escorting So Don back to Pyongyang. The next day, Chiol Gang, armed with the information obtained from the rat soldiers eavesdropping, arrests and interrogates Captain Ri's men about Se Ri. Bruised and battered, the loyal soldiers gather at Captain Ri's house afterward, and in a heartfelt gesture, Se Ri shows them a heart sign, which oddly leaves Captain Ri feeling both annoyed and jealous for reasons he can't fully comprehend. As part of their now second escape plan, Se Ri and Captain Ri catch the train to Pyongyang, where they can get the passport photo required for Se Ri's escape to Europe. In one of the most iconic scenes of the drama, Se Ri and Captain Ri share a heartwarming campout scene by a bonfire on their way to Pyongyang. However, in yet another twist of fate, Song Jun unexpectedly crossed paths with Se Ri in the hotel lobby, setting the stage for new and unpredictable developments in their intertwined stories. Little does Se Ri suspect that her second eldest brother has secretly negotiated with Song Jun to prevent her return to South Korea after learning of her survival in North Korea. In Pyongyang, Captain Ri who had grown increasingly fond of Se Ri, finds himself torn with mixed emotions upon seeing her meet So Ng Jun, who she used to be in an arranged relationship with back in Seoul. Upon their return to the village, Captain Ri and his men put together a farewell picnic. Seemingly all set to go, on the day of her scheduled flight at Pyongyang International Airport, they fall into an ambush, where Captain Ri fearlessly takes a bullet for Se Ri during a fierce exchange of gunfire. In the meantime, So Don and So Ng Jun struck an unlikely alliance to resolve their issues regarding Captain Ri and Se Ri. So Ng Jun meets with Cho Chiol Gang, informing him about Se Ri's presence in North Korea. With Se Ri selflessly missing her flight to freedom to drive the injured Captain Ri to the hospital. After Captain Ri wakes up from surgery, he is initially mad at Se Ri for not taking her chance as they planned. However, when he learns about how she saved his life, his anger transforms into gratitude, leading him to seek Se Ri's forgiveness and they end up kissing. The next day, Se Ri gives So Ng Jun a call to find out if he has informed her family about her current situation. And just as she hangs up the phone, the military storms into the hospital trying to catch Captain Ri. Chiol Gang confronts Captain Ri, accusing him of interfering with the weapons involved in the previous ambush, and orders his immediate arrest. But thankfully, Captain Ri's father who is a powerful member of the party steps in to protect his son. Soon after, So Dong confronts Captain Ri about his feelings for Se Ri, begging him to put those aside and go ahead with their planned wedding. Se Ri, on the other hand, meets up with So Ng Jun, who lies to her and claims her family back in Seoul is worried about her. Even though, in reality, the news of Se Ri's death is publicly announced back in Seoul. By some twist of fate, Se Ri's death announcement reaches So Dawn through a smuggled bridal magazine exposing her identity as a South Korean citizen. Filled with righteous anger, she confronts Captain Ri about the dangers of keeping Se Ri's identity hidden. Unaware of Song Jun's ulterior motives, Song Jun manages to convince Se Ri to escape to Europe using fake marriage documents, but Song Jun soon realizes that keeping Captain Ri and Se Ri apart was not going to be easy. As Captain Ri searches for Se Ri in a hospital vehicle, Se Ri steals Song Jun's car to look for Captain Ri in a snowstorm, eventually uniting in an empty school. While Se Ri and Captain Ri are falling in love, Chiol Gang traces the location of the villa. And, after going to buy Captain Ri a gift, Se Ri is kidnapped by a group of men, dropping the gift watch, which is picked up by the rat soldier's young son. After a stressful call from Se Ri lures Captain Ri out of safety, Chiol Gang catches up with and beats Captain Ri, leading to his detention and interrogation. After being kidnapped, Se Ri is taken to what she doesn't realize is Captain Ri's family home. Unaware of the connection, she opens up to Captain Ri's father. Overhearing her story, Captain Ri's mother moves Se Ri to a comfortable room, which happens to be Captain Ri's own room. Freed with his father's help, Captain Ri returns home and is relieved to find Se Ri safe. A final secret escape plan is created for Se Ri with the help of Captain Ri's trusted men, this time through a section of the demarcation line where the electric fences are down, allowing her to cross to the South Korean side. Ultimately, Se Ri crosses the border and Captain Ri briefly follows her and bids farewell with a tender last kiss, before returning back to the North Korean side. Se Ri, now back in her luxurious life in Seoul is ready to reclaim her old life. 
After seeing her own funeral tributes, she attends a board meeting where she faces the potential dissolution of her chairmanship and ownership of her company. In the end, despite regaining control of her business, something feels missing, and Sei Ri finds herself sleepless and crying, longing for her life in North Korea and Captain Ri. Back in North Korea, Captain Ri is gathering proof that links Chiol Gang to his brother's death, with a confession from the rat soldier and hidden anomalies in a memory card hidden in Sei Ri's gift watch. In a twist nobody could see coming, Chiol Gang actually escapes to South Korea to seek revenge on Sei Ri, Captain Ri, and his family while using Sei Ri's brother, who is still fighting for the chairmanship against her. Fearing for Sei Ri's safety, Captain Ri decides to protect her at all costs, crawling through a dangerous tunnel to reach South Korea. Infiltrating Sei Ri's company's security team, Chiol Gang poses a new threat. Back in North Korea, Captain Ri's team of soldiers is tasked by Captain Ri's father to bring Chiol Gang back to the north before he creates an international emergency. In the bustling Gangnam district of Seoul, Captain Ri searches for Sei Ri in the Sea of People. Finally, their paths crossed, and in a moment of exhaustion and relief, they unite. In her own stylish way, Sei Ri introduces him as her new bodyguard and Captain Ri witnesses a new side of Sei Ri's world, including the complex power struggle within her family. In North Korea, So Don provides shelter for So Young Jun after he is exposed as a fugitive, even caring for him when he falls ill, and the two open up to each other, developing a romance along the way. In a hilarious turn of events, Captain Ri's team, now in South Korea tracks down Chiol Gang and finds themselves in a whole new world in Seoul, comically struggling to adjust to all the new technology and way of life. Once they reunite with Captain Ri and Sei Ri, the whole crew is finally ready to work together to try and arrest Chiol Gang who has been stalking and attacking them with the help of Manager Oh, the broker for So Young Jun. Chiol Gang even shoots Sei Ri in one of these incidents, adding to the building tension. Trying everything in the book to bring Captain Ri and Sei Ri down, eventually, Chiol Gang is brought down when Captain Ri bursts on the scene, gun in hand with National Intelligence Service NIS agents following closely behind. But fate intervenes, and Chiol Gang ends up getting shot first. In a shocking twist, Chiol Gang unveils evidence of Captain Ri and Sei Ri's relationship and declares that Captain Ri's parents will be executed if he goes back to North Korea. Overwhelmed by the circumstances, Captain Ri finds himself contemplating taking his own life. However, before he can act, the NIS arrests him. After all, he is still a North Korean who is illegally in Seoul. Back in North Korea, in a daring act of bravery, So Young Jun rescues So Don from a dangerous group of mobsters. However, he pays a heavy price for his heroism and is mortally hurt during the rescue. With their final words exchanged, So Young Jun succumbs to his injuries on the way to the hospital, leaving So Don devastated and seeking personal revenge against those responsible for his death. In the South, the NIS takes action, arresting Sei Ri's second brother and sister-in-law for their involvement in various criminal activities to the extent of killing Sei Ri. Concurrently, Captain Ri lies to the NIS to protect Sei Ri, claiming he came to convince her to return to North Korea and seek revenge on Chiol Gang, but Sei Ri denies this. In a sad turn, the weight of her emotions triggers a life-threatening resurgence of sepsis in Sei Ri, causing her to fight for her life in the hospital. Thankfully, she recovers from this ordeal, but her heart aches upon discovering that Captain Ri is being escorted out of the country. Despite her fragile medical condition, Sei Ri manages to summon the strength to bid Captain Ri a tearful goodbye at the DMZ. Before their separation becomes inevitable, Captain Ri leaves behind thoughtful reminders by ensuring that Sei Ri has enough food stocked up, has piano renditions on her portable voice recorder, and trusts her with Edelway seeds, and surprises her with reserved phone messages sent in advance with the assistance of an NIS officer. Years pass, and Sei Ri establishes a music foundation that sponsors scholarships for talented piano prodigies worldwide forming a strategic alliance with a renowned music foundation based in Switzerland. Captain Ri completes his military service and becomes a pianist for the National Symphony Orchestra, which leads him back to Switzerland where fate intervenes, and he finds himself standing in front of Sei Ri. A magical moment unfolds as Sei Ri paraglides and lands right before him, reuniting the two souls who have endured separation and hardship and reaffirming their love for each other. What is your reaction to the ending of Crash Landing on you?